10 things you need to know before you buy Sea of Thieves. 1. Enemies. A pirate's life isn't easy. While playing Sea of Thieves, players will come across a variety of enemy types. From the gameplay footage we've seen, and we've seen quite a lot of it, enemies such as sharks and undead skeletons have already been confirmed, while we also know for a fact that Krokens will also be included in the game, because what's a pirate game without Krokens? And, of course, there will be other pirates as well. That, incidentally, brings us to our next point. 2. No NPC ships. You'll be running into a lot of other pirates and pirate ships in Sea of Thieves, and be it for fights over treasure or just for the joy of naval battles, there will be plenty of pirate versus pirate action in the game. The interesting thing, though, is that none of the pirates and pirate ships in Sea of Thieves will be in PC as they will all be other players. It will be interesting to see just how well the gang manages to balance these two very different kinds of encounters against actual player-controlled pirates and ships on the one hand, and against AI enemy types on the other. 3. PvP the encounters against any other pirates you come across in Sea of Thieves definitely sound interesting though. Players will be able to engage each other in naval battles, complete with cannon fire and boarding each other's ships. Interestingly enough, players will also be able to shoot themselves, or other players, out of a cannon onto other ships. On a smaller scale, one-on-one -on -one battles versus other players also look promising, with weapons such as cutlasses and pistols and what have you thrown into the mix. There is the concern that with no skill trees and class specializations, one-on-one -on -one combat could be a little shallow, so let's hope Rare have already taken that potential issue into consideration. 4. No overarching story. Interestingly enough, Sea of Thieves won't have any kind of an overarching narrative. Rare's focus with this game is clearly on providing an experience that can be an endless loop of gameplay, with an absolute focus on player-made moments and emerging open-world gameplay, so this choice does make sense. However, with no single end goal to work towards, will the game be hurt by a lack of focus? After all, even other shared world titles such as Destiny and The Division all have at least some kind of a narrative structure. We can't say for sure either way, but let's just hope Rare are aware of the potential issues this could pose. 5. Xbox One X Enhanced Sea of Thieves will also sport some pretty impressive enhancements for the Xbox One X, which is to be expected, considering it's a major upcoming first-party release by Microsoft. On the Xbox One X, Sea of Thieves will run at a native 4K resolution, so no checkerboarding will be required, while Rare have also promised that the usage of higher resolution shadows and textures will put the game's visual fidelity on the system at par with PC graphics. It remains to be seen just how much truth there is in that statement, but it definitely sounds promising as things stand right now. 6. Crossplay Microsoft games in the past have occasionally not supported crossplay at launch, Gears of War 4 comes to mind, but thankfully enough, that won't be the case with Sea of Thieves. That's right, people who are playing the game on PC and people who are playing it on the Xbox One will all be able to play with and against each other, and that'll be true right from the day the game launches. Additionally, the game will also be part of Microsoft's Play Anywhere program, which means that if you purchase it on Xbox, you'll be able to play it on PC through that same purchase, and vice versa. 7. Communication Being a co-op multiplayer game, communicating with your crewmates and fellow pirates will obviously be very important while you're playing Sea of Thieves. You will, of course, have the option to do that via your headsets, but in case you don't have access to one, the game will let you do that by using in-game prompts through Radio Wheel. Options such as follow me or help me will obviously be included, but what's interesting here is that the dialogue you can choose from will be contextual, so it will vary depending on your location, or even depending on what role you're playing as a crewmate on the ship. These phrases will also automatically get translated in case the person you're communicating with is playing the game in a different language. 
8. In-game death. Dying in Sea of Thieves will involve a lot of unique and interesting mechanics. When players die, they will find themselves aboard a ghostly ferry that is transporting various other ghosts. In this environment, players will be able to interact with said ghosts, but what's really interesting is that to get back to the world of the living, you will have to convince the captain of the ferry to let you off the hook, which is something you will only be able to do if you accomplish certain tasks or quests he gives you. If you died with your ship, its sunken remains will remain underwater too, where other players will be able to venture to claim your treasure and loot, though you will be able to recover your vessel by asking a magical mermaid to do so. 9. Treasure Hunts Treasure Hunts will be a major part of the Sea of Thieves gameplay loop, and what we know about them sounds really interesting so far. Players will have to acquire maps that will reveal the location of these treasures sounds pretty regular, right? Well, what's interesting is that rather than adding markers to your in-game mini-map, you'll have to physically look at these maps in the game and compare them to your surroundings, and then navigate with respect to landmarks. The treasure itself will also physically exist in the world, so after finding it, you will have to actually carry it back to your ship, while also making sure that it doesn't get snatched away by rival pirates or that you don't get killed by other enemies while you're doing so. 10. Quests. While there won't be a single overarching narrative to guide you throughout the entire experience, Sea of Thieves will be telling plenty of smaller, individual stories. This, of course, will be done in the form of quests. As we've already mentioned earlier, players will have the option of going to towns and cities and ports to accept quests from NPCs, if they wish to do that rather than just freely sailing the high seas. In addition to these structured narrative-driven quests, Sea of Thieves will also feature secondary procedurally generated quests. We imagine these will come in handy in case players want to farm loot or booty. Just, try not to be this one. <laughs> 